Hi, I'm Grit Gresham, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Markham Park Target Range here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In a few minutes, we'll begin our coverage of the 6th Annual Chevy Truck Sportsman's Team Challenge, America's premier all-around shooting championship. But before we do, Tom Gresham and I would like to talk a little bit about this unique competition. The Chevy Truck Sportsman's Team Challenge was designed from the ground up as a competition that would be wide open to everyone who likes to shoot. There are no pre-shoot restrictions or classification requirements on the entrance. So it's not surprising that the largest class by far is the sportsman's class. Men and women who enjoy competitive shooting, but who are not necessarily top shooters or even registered shooters in other disciplines. Also this year, they've added a novice class open to all first time team challenge competitors. It's a perfect way to get your feet wet even if you've never competed in this kind of all-around event. Of course, the open class attracts many of the country's top competitive shooters from many disciplines, and that's a real bonus for everyone else. Instead of just watching from the stands, sportsmen and novice class shooters get to rub elbows and shoot side by side with many of the top guns in the world. It's not that far from getting a turn at bat in a major league game or getting to tee off with the pros in a PGA event. In fact, the format of the team challenge has been developed with the weekend shooter in mind. To start off, no course of fire, whether handgun, rifle, or pistol, requires a customized or even a highly specialized target firearm. One of the things that many of the competitors tell me they like about the team challenge is that they already have the guns they need to compete, whether it's a favorite bird gun or a 22 auto loader. What it really comes down to is that there isn't a target out here that you can't hit with an out-of-the-box gun. And it's not just the top couple of teams that finish in the money. In the sportsman and novice classes, the payout goes all the way down to 12th place. The total purse in the sportsman's class is over $40,000, and the novice class pays out over $6,000. That translates into fifth and sixth place winnings of more than a few thousand dollars. And in the team challenge, you don't have to shoot a perfect or near perfect score to place among the winners. Among the top 12 finishers in the sportsman's class last year, the average score was a 431 out of 600. And last year's winner in the novice class topped the field with a score of 405 out of 600. Of course, as in any shooting game, practice is the key. The Sportsman's Team Challenge holds preview events in regions around the country where you can experience these courses of fire firsthand. You can also get a free copy of the Sportsman's Team Challenge Competitor's Manual, which includes diagrams of the courses of fire and suggestions on how you can practice on your own. You know, the Sportsman's Team Challenge reminds me of a good old-fashioned shooting match. It's open to anyone who wants to step up to the line. The accent is on good shooting, not on elaborate guns and gear. And it's what good shooting fun is all about. So I hope to see you down here in Florida the next time, and I hope you enjoy the show. In the world of competitive shooting, it stands alone. From start to finish, no other event places more demands on a shooter's all-around ability. From pinpoint precision and a rock steady hole one moment to breakneck speed and split second timing the next. It's a one of a kind triathlon of handgun, rifle, and shotgun marksmanship skills. Perhaps the ultimate challenge for any of America's top competitive shooters. Hi, I'm Gritz Gresham, shooting editor of Sports the Field magazine. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the sixth annual national championships of the Chevy Truck Sportsman's Team Challenge here at the Markham Park Target Range at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Imagine, if you will, a track meet where each runner had to compete in a marathon, a 10,000-meter race, and a 100-meter sprint. And you'd have some idea what this shooting competition is all about. From the starter's gun to the finish line, this all-around competition truly puts a premium on endurance and speed and the ability of competitors to adapt quickly and successfully to very different demands as they move from one stage of this competition to the next. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back with America's Top Gun as they buy for the national all-around shooting title. Yeah! Joining me to cover the action this year is fellow Sports Appeal editor Tom Gresham. Tom, you know, I think the question on the minds of many of the competitors this year is, can anybody beat the Smith & Wesson team of Mike Plaxco, Jerry Michalik, and Judy Woolley? Well, that's right. Quite frankly, there were some doubts last year about the team's overall strength when Judy joined the team of Mike and Jerry, becoming the first woman to compete side by side with the men in the Open Class Championship round. As it turned out, in the 93 championship, Judy not only held up her end of the bargain, 
but she helped pace the Smith & Wesson team to another first place finish. But it was by no means a runaway victory for Smith & Wesson. Going into the final handgun event, Smith & Wesson had only a six point lead over the Dillon Precision team. After the smoke had cleared, Smith & Wesson did come out on top, but only by a slim margin. And that's given quite a bit of encouragement to three or four of the top teams here this year, especially last year's runner-up team from Dillon Precision. Rob Latham is not only one of America's top handgunners, but also one of the strongest all-around competitors at this event. Arndt Meyer and Mike Voigt not only have a number of national pistol titles under their belts, but both are also highly accomplished shotgunners. All three of these men know what it takes to get into the winner's circle, and they can cover this competition from one end to the other. They came awfully close to winning last year, and I know they'll go all out to take top honors this time. Much the same thing can be said about the men shooting on the Sierra Starline team. All three members are veteran team challenge competitors and top ranked shooters in their own discipline. Brian Enos, a Bianchi Cup and Masters champion, is day in and day out one of the best handgun shooters in the country. David Tubb is America's top metallic silhouette rifle shooter. And Doug Koenig may well be America's best young shooter with a Masters championship already to his credit. This team was in the running for the top spot in the championship round last year and they all know that they have a very realistic chance to win this year. Of course, the Smith & Wesson team is still the team to beat. Arkansas native Michael Plaxco, a man who's won virtually every major handgun match in competitive shooting, is back as the team's captain. Jerry Michalik, currently the fastest revolver shooter in the country, is also back on the team. Judy Woolley, a two-time world speed shooting champion, and indeed the first full-time factory-sponsored professional female shooter since Annie Oakley, rounds out this championship group. While these top shooters come from a truly wide range of competitive backgrounds, all the teams have one thing in common. That's the hundreds of hours of practice most of them put in for this one match alone. And that's not surprising. At no other event do competitors face so many different or such contrasting shooting challenges. Every team here must compete in six unique courses of fire, divided between shotgun, rifle, and handgun events. While the team challenge features many of the top shooters in the country, this event also has classes for sportsmen and industry teams. Indeed, sportsmen shooters form the largest class competing here, attracting several hundred shooters from around the country and giving this Chevy truck event a special flavor all its own. This is a really fun event because there's such a variety of competitions. We have the rifle, pistol, shotgun. Most shooters here are very well established in only one discipline, myself, shotgun, for instance. But I get a chance to compete against the best in the world in rifle and pistol and shotgun, and it brings it all together, and it's a great time. So this is uh, the first time that I've shot this event, uh, these events, and it's just fantastic. It really makes you appreciate what some of these people have gone through to do as well as they do. It was an exceptionally tight race in the preliminary round, with five teams challenging for the top three spots in this year's championship shoot-off. But when the last shots were fired, it was our top contenders, the team from Sierra Starline, Smith & Wesson, and Dillon Precision, who made it into the final, and will be shooting head-to-head -head for this year's championship crown and a share of the $148,000 purse. We'll be right back after these messages. The championship round got underway with three uniquely challenging shotgun events. In the flurry, five computer-controlled traps throw 50 clay targets toward the shooters. Five at once, and then one practically right after the other. In the flush event, the challenge is reversed. The five traps throwing 50 targets at different angles and elevations away from the shooters. In the mixed bag event, team members take turns, each facing a series of doubles. Two targets thrown at the same time from any pair of multiple traps set out on either side, in front, and even in back of the shooter. On the uh, Sierra Starline team, looks like they're going to have uh, Doug Koenig in the left-hand box, David Tubb in the middle, and Brian Enos taking the right-hand birds. All right, here comes the Sierra Starline team, about to call for the first five birds at once in the flurry. There they go. They that won't get by on that initial flurry. That's uh, surprising that they missed that first bird. Working very well in sequence now. They seem to have their rotation work. Nice tempo, oh, there, nice rhythm got, in these shots. One got by them there. That's two. Each man is taking two shots, and then they rotate to the next one. Yeah, lost another one. Smith the Western team is up now. We got Jerry Mitchellick in the left cage. Judy Woolley in the center. Looks like Mike Plaxco is picking up the right cage. 
Looks like they got all of, oh, I see one got by in the initial flurry. Sure did. So these are the champs, so the pressure is really on them. The Smith team seems to be taking those birds just a little quicker than the uh, Sierra Starline team did. A little bit further in front of the cages. They're really shooting well today. Whoa! Hey, we've got the Dillon team up here. They took them all. Come on. Nice shooting. All right. Two together. Yep, but they were coming. Right. They're talking to each other as they're shooting. If somebody uh, doubles up or he misses one, he hollers for the other guy to take it. They work on this time and time again so that they know what to do in any eventuality. Now, there's the bird just got by him. They're down two. That's three. Lost another one. He looks so easy and can be so hard. The official scores a 94. That puts them tied with the Sierra Starline team as they finish the flurry event. And both of them are four points behind Smith and Wesson. We're an industry team, and, and Cold is getting back into the competition aspect of shooting and trying to have a presence and support shooting. And we're, we're, having, we're having a good go for the first time for this team. It's great. There's a lot of camaraderie and uh, a lot of people here. Every year, it just gets better and better. Targets are the same for everyone, and if you're on them, you shoot them. It's a uh, shootout extravaganza. You can shoot all you want, and you get to meet real important people and best shooters in the world. I wouldn't miss it for anything. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of camaraderie. You meet some great people. And it really doesn't matter how good of a shooter you are. You're just here to have a good time and learn what, it, what it's like to be a part of the shooting sports. In the industry class, the team from Winchester led wire to wire in the championship round and took first place honors with a great score of 480. Great shooting. The pressure was on, but the Winchester team came through again. You're the winners of the industry class. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. It's always a great shoot. It's a fun shoot, and there's always a lot of competition. Well, congratulations. Thank you again. Okay, we're getting ready to go into this second venue, this uh, mixed bag, and they're rotating these top teams, so Smith and Weston is starting first this time. Tom, this mixed bag, again, I think is the hardest to the shotgun venues and the scores seem to indicate that. Each shooter calls pull and then gets a pair of targets from random traps. They just don't know where they're coming from. The rabbit can take some wild hops as it comes across. Boy, Mike held on that rabbit a long, long time. One of the competitors was saying that these are targets that you just don't see on a trapper's feet field. You've got to be a sporting clay shooter to have seen these targets before. I see Rob shooting an over and under here. Yeah, it's just a matter of individual preference, really. They're going to shoot uh, two shots at each pull, and so the over and under works just as well as the semi-auto. Right. Tom, these traps are, are computer controlled, so they never know what uh, sequence these targets are going to come out in. You get a, a springing peel and then a rabbit on the ground, it can be tough. I believe they said that there are 200 different uh, patterns programmed in the computer, so it's just pure luck of the draw as to whether you get an easy combination or a difficult one. And of course, there's also the luck of just uh, when that rabbit's going to take a hop. You don't know that either. Oh, that's for sure. You know, they say it, you don't win this event on the shotgun, and that comes first, but you can certainly lose it. Yeah, Dylan is uh, 18 points behind Smith and Wesson going into this third and uh, the final of the shotgun venues. And that can be made up very rapidly on these events. That's right. In the sportsman's class, the long shots from South Carolina fought a neck and neck race with the B-Square and Carolina Blues team through the championship round. With a perfect 100 in the handgun event, they took first place with a final score of 498. Great shooting, over 50 teams in the sportsman's class and you pulled it out. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. We feel very fortunate. It was fine shooting by my teammates. The first and second and third place teams were inter interchanging places, two or three times, two or three lead changes. We're just very fortunate to have been ahead when the thing was over. The flush is the last of the shotgun events, and the Dillon team shoots first. In the flush, strategy is the key. In this one, they cover for each other. If one of them misses the target, the other one tries to pick it up, and so they're uh, talking to each other the whole time. They are really smoking some targets. These guys are shooting well. You got some high ones, some low ones, right and left crossers. They're really smoking them. See, I think the, uh, the pressure is working on these guys now. We got the Smith and Wesson team up now shooting the uh, flush. They're covering for each other. Hey! 
Look like an awfully good round. Excellent yeah. round. That wraps up the three shotgun events, and Smith and Wesson has the lead. They've given Sierra and Dylan something to shoot at. Well, they have. The scores right now are 260 for the Smith and Wesson team, 244 for Dylan, 222 for Sierra. The Smith and Wesson team has the lead, but it's not so much that they can't catch up. The final three events in this championship round involve rifle or handgun shooting, with rifle up first. Okay, the Sierra team is up first in this rifle match, and uh, they've got a lot to make up. Looks like they're just mowing them down. The smaller the target and the farther away it is, the more points it counts, and then there are additional bonus points for clearing each bank of targets. 45 is clean. Another interesting thing of this uh, competition, Tom, is that they can only have two magazines loaded when they begin, 10 rounds each, and they have to reload after they run out of those, and uh, they can keep reloading as long as they have time. 90 is clean. Looks like they've got 15 Two seconds 60. left. Small one. They're trying to get those one-inch targets right now that are really hard. They've cleaned it. They've cleaned it with nine seconds left. A perfect score. The perfect score, the time is there. Watch Jerry. Look at that. Is that fast or he, is that fast? He's just mowing them down. Working on the one inches now. One inch targeted 40 one yards and one inch targeted 55 yards is it. tough. Oh, yeah. It's try, like trying to hit a quarter. You're in the offhand position and you're uh, nervous. You got two of them. You got three of them. Got them all. I got them all. I had five seconds left. <laughs> Even though it took them a little longer than the Sierra team, the score is still the same. So that gives Beautiful them a shooting. 100. Beautiful shooting. Of course, Dylan is to come up next. And they'll have to shoot a perfect score in order not to lose ground. That's right. They're going to have to shoot a perfect 100 just to keep their place. All I can say is Smith & Wesson is making it tough on them again. Interesting, uh, looking at their rifles, you'll see that they have uh, barrel weights out on them. And that weight out front helps them hold that rifle steady. Yeah, it, it stabilizes it, uh, hangs in there nicely. With the pressure mounting and the seconds ticking away, the Dillon team missed the last bonus target. That kept them in second place, but they've slipped a few more points behind Smith & Wesson with only two events to go. Here we are at the uh, combo again. And Smith & Wesson team is up first. This is the event where you have two of them shooting handguns and one shooting a rifle. Of course, on some of these banks, they have a covering target. They have to actually hit the first one to uncover the second target so they can shoot it in. The second one is an even smaller target. Yes, I think a change this year is they get a point for uncovering it, too. That's right. This team really needs a 100 on this event to stay within reach. They're concentrating on the uh, far out banks, and they're not shooting the close up banks at all. They don't have a single target down on that uh, 90 yard bank. Nope, haven't shot at them yet. There's one. That's right. the first one in the far bank. That doesn't look good for the Dillon team. They're losing time. They're losing time. Looks like they have uh, Brian Enos shooting the handgun and David Tubb shooting the rifle. Doug Koenig is doing loading for both of them. They've knocked out all of the blocking targets. Now they're working on the scoring targets within. Holy cow. They are really shooting well. Two targets. Ryan Eos is having trouble with those small scoring targets out there. Yeah, that's a long Oh, they just off. cleaned the whole thing. Okay. Holy right. cow. That's exactly what they had to do. That keeps them in the running. It really does. They knew what they had to do. They got in there, they shot aggressively, and they just cleaned them all. Well, Tom, as we go into the final event of this Sportsman's Team Challenge, Smith & Wesson has the lead. They stood the pressure, and it's clear that they gave these other two finalists something to shoot at. Well, they sure did. You know, they're 27 points ahead of the Dillon team and 29 points ahead of the Sierra Starline team. And while that may seem like an insurmountable lead, it's really not because in this last event, anything can happen. Last year, we had a team have a, an equipment malfunction that kicked them out. And also at this level, the pressure can cause anybody to choke. Well, the Sierra Starline team will be the first to shoot in the handgun event because they are in the bottom of the rung coming up on the, this event. But only two points back. Well, that's right. It's only two points. That means one single target separates second and third place. And that's an $8,000 difference if they uh, finish second rather than third. Mm 
I've got Doug Koenig is uh, taking out these precision targets with no problem at all. He's just working his way right down the line. Well, he's one of the finest handgunners in the country. He's won the Masters and the Bianchi Cup, and he is just at his peak. Can we go to the speed event? David Tubbs shooting the speed event. Let's see if he can handle these. He's the rifle shooter, but he sure can handle that pistol, too. Wow, did he mow those down. Still have 43 seconds, 42 seconds. Here comes Brian Enos. This is the long range event, and Brian Enos is the shooter. Oh, he's, he's just flopping them over. Hasn't missed a target yet. Lots of time left. That's his first miss. Back on track now. Two left. 15 seconds. There you Got go. He cut it all. Great shooting with five seconds to spare. Well, we've got Team Dillon coming up, and this is important to them. If they drop one target, they move from second place to third place and lose $8,000. So in other words, when they're finished, if there's a single target standing, it's going to cost them $8,000. Robbie Latham up on the uh, precision shooting. What he needs is speed, speed, and more speed. That's all the targets. He's unloaded. Now, Mike Boyd's going to go to the center position. This is the speed event. 54 seconds. Wow, is that fast? Thirty-nine seconds left. It's going to be tight. That's not a lot of time. Art's going to get there. He's not going to have... He's got 30 seconds. Looks like he's going to start with 30 seconds on the clock. Yep. He had a jam. He's got 14 seconds left. That's enough time. Yeah, it really is. He's going to have to reload at least one. One left. Five, four. He got, he got him. him. So the, t the Dillon team has moved into second place. Now that is cool under pressure, isn't it? It really is. He took it right down to the wire. They had that one target standing. That was the $8,000 target. That's right. He didn't have uh, much uh, time to start with and then had that jam. He came right back, kept his cool, and ran the, ran the whole bank. That's right. Just uh, stayed with it the whole way, which is what it took. That was some mighty fine shooting, and it moved Dylan into second place, and at least gives them a chance at first. Now everything rests with Smith and Wesson and their performance. Right. All right, here's Judy Woolley in the leadoff position, shooting the precision part of this event. Now the Smith and Wesson team is in the lead. Some wondered if Judy could hold up her end of everything. But it turns out that she is one of the best shooters in the country at this type of event. She missed two or three of those. Uh, she's shooting well, targets. but she's not yes. moving as fast as I would have expected. Yes. Taking a little more time than normal. Already down to uh, less than a minute. That's not giving her much time for these other two events. Anything can happen here. All right, she's finished, but there's 48 seconds. Let's see what we have here. All right, Jerry Mitchellick is going to be shooting the speed event. Even though he's the fastest revolver shooter in the world, he's using a semi-auto for this one, mainly for the speed of reloading. Got them all. 27 seconds left. All right, this, is gonna be, this is going to be a challenge. Here comes Michael Plaxico. He has only 20 seconds to do this. Ten seconds left. Michael 
Michael Smith, there's just not enough time. He left two targets standing, but that's still going to be enough. Smith & Wesson is going to win it again. It's a dynasty. Boy, it is. These people are real professionals. It was another great shooting performance by the Smith & Wesson team. And in addition to taking top honors, Gary Van Nord of Chevrolet Trucks awarded them the winner's check. On behalf of Chevy Truck, I'm proud to present you with this check for $33,000. Thank you. Congratulations. Jerry, thank you. On behalf of Smith & Wesson, and the National Shooting Sports Foundation, we thank you. Smith and Weston came into the preliminary round this year a little shaky. I don't think they had quite the confidence they did last year. But they didn't fall under pressure. In the championship round, they came through like the true champions they are. It was a great shoot. I enjoyed working with you, Tom. Thank you for being with us. And I hope you'll join us again on the next edition of Shooting Sports America.